Brenna, Brenna, I've been looking everywhere, but I, why is all the fun gone? Why is the fun gone? What are you talking about, Scotty? It's fun fiction. Welcome to Fun Fiction, ladies and gentlemen, the weekly podcast about movies and TVs and good stuffs and the fan fiction it inspires. I am your host, Scotty Moore. And I am the other host, Brenna Clark. Hello, friends. And Brenna, at last week we did, had a great Adventure Zone episode. I mean, how do I follow this up? Uh, I'm going to Disney World, so... That'll do it. That's my celebration. My celebration for a great episode about Adventure Zone is I'm going to Disney World. And I'm going to take you with me. What? Through the, through this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Well, I was... I, it also happened because I was on the our fan one of the two fan fiction websites that exists, and I reached a point where I was just like, "Why don't we just do something that has a lot, like an insanely large amount?" And I don't know why, but everyone's into that Pirates of the Caribbean fan fiction. They are on pi- Pirates fever, swipe sweeping the nation. Is it? This is the first that I've heard of it. I mean, well, it's sweeping the fan fiction nation. Okay. I guess not the I mean, fan fiction it, that I read. Yeah. I mean, it does sweep the... It swept the nation... Swept it. The first <laughs> it, sw- it swept it. It swept it. The first... I mean, when the first movie come out, like, everyone... <laughs> wasn't that the year, like, everyone was Jack Sparrow for Halloween yes. and stuff? Like, also, I don't know if you... I can't remember what they played the trailer for this before. But dog, it scared the shit out of me to a point where afterwards my mom's like, "Hey, do you want to go see that?" Hell no, mom. <laughs> Did you see them punk ass skeletons? I ain't dealing punk with ass that. Skeletons. That well, I don't know if it was to the first movie or if it was to one of the sequels, but that it inspired the first time that I ever cosplayed. Like I was Elizabeth at one point. To see oh, that's awesome. one of the movies, yeah, because my cousin dressed up as Jack Sparrow, I think, and we rocked it out. It was awesome. Oh, oh when the fifth one came out and I was in Disney World, I, like when I went to see Guardians of the Galaxy 2 at Disney, there were people dressed in character for that, which, by the way, just want to get this out of, uh, out of the way real quick. Didn't realize Gamora's in this movie. Oh, yeah, she is. Yeah, I was just like looking. I was like, wait a minute, is that Gamora? What the fuck? Hey, Gamora, what's up? Uh, what you doing, but, girl? How you doing, girl? But yeah, um, I wanted to go to the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean five premiere as Jack Sparrow, but then I like, I was like, I'm good. I'm, I can't afford it. Oh yeah, that would take a lot of money and effort, mm-hmm. but mostly money. But yeah, uh, dude. I forgot how dope Elizabeth is in this movie. She is so freaking dope. I mean, I think this is one of the first times that I remember being like, hey, girls are badass. Mm -hmm. Because she's like fighting in a dress and a corset and she's the shit. Not only that, like a lot of what she does shows how fucked up the things of the time were, including the numerous times she passes out in a corset. But my favorite one... And I don't. I guess it's something that they did a lot back then. Is where they put the hot, the pan of hot coals in her bed to keep her warm. And all I could think was like, that's real fucked up. And then Elizabeth later uses it to take out two pirates. And I'm like, good. Even Elizabeth knows this is kind of fucked up what they're doing. Yeah, she was woke. <laughs> Elizabeth, <laughs> Elizabeth woke as fuck. Um, Elizabeth was great. Jack. I mean, we could probably do a whole show on Jack. I love Jack. You know what's so weird to me? Something that I was looking up because I just went to IMDb and I was like, let's look up some trivia. And the list of um, actors that they went through before they got to Johnny Depp is just like astounding to me. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's an insane amount of people that they went through. And they're like, I guess Edward Scissorhands. I like, guess we could pull this off. They wanted to use Matthew McConaughey. Can you imagine? <laughs> this Jimmy Buffett motherfucker <laughs> just pulled up like, hey, I see y'all got <laughs> I was just thinking about taking that boat for a while, if that'd be all right. <laughs> all right, all right. 
at which point the guy, like, it wouldn't be like where Jack is like charismatically going through everything. People would just be like, this dude seems chill. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of being like drunk off of rum, he's just like high off of pirate weed. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> high off pirate re- weed and drinking like a rum runner. <laughs> How y'all doing? I just want to have a nice <laughs> little boat, have us a good time here. Awesome. Oh man, I'm uh, a skeleton. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I got turned into a skeleton. Oh, it's all right. Now y'all can't kill me. <laughs> yeah. Ain't that a plot twist? <laughs> Which, by the way, um, how does the how do bullets work? Because that last scene where Jack shoots. And then he's like, ah, you missed me, boy. And then uh, fucking Will sounds like he's talking and screaming and whispering at the same time. (laughs) Turner is just like, no, I've actually got this. And then he like puts the blood and the coin in. He's like, oh, no, now I guess I am shot by this gun. I'm like, well, no, he's a skeleton. It would have went through anyways. uh, Maybe it's stuck in a bone or something I don't know. <laughs> they got stuck in a bone yeah. yeah they played real fast and loose with the whole skeletal pirate rules in that last scene although the last scene is dope as shit though it is but i mean you mm-hmm. gotta do what you gotta do to get to the ending they couldn't yeah. just let the bullets go through and just nothing that's the dramatic reveal <laughs> Which, by the way, is this the first time Disney do, Disney played the suicide card? Disney was like, hey, just so you know, this pirate has a gun that was meant for him to kill himself with. And I was like, wow, that's actually, this might be the first time Disney was like, yeah, kill yourself. I don't know. We might have to look that up. I did see that it was the first time they did a PG-13 rating. Scandalous. Yeah, I, I, well, not on I me, mean, motherfucker. This movie violent as shit. That it is. Like, like uh, I remember watching it and sh- like I literally watched it an hour before we started recording, and I remember just being like, "Oh yeah, this is the cool." Because with me, I was more looking for scenes from the ride because that was what was gonna make me giddy. Like the first lady who goes up to Jack when they get to Tortuga is the redhead from the Pirates right. of the Caribbean ride that freaked me out. Um, and so there's a lot of scenes during that first attack that are from like reminiscent of the ride if the ride was done by like jason Voorhees, <laughs> like, like in the ride it's just like oh look the pirate is chasing around the lady in her home and this one is just like the pirate rips her leg off and beats her to <laughs> death with it i look the prospect of the ride freaked me out so much when i was a kid and wrote it because it was very dark and very cold because of the water and i was like i'm going mm-hmm. to die in here I'm not gonna lie, dude, I had the same feels, because I also, when I first wrote it, I was not a thrill ride boy, like, I wasn't into roller coasters and stuff, and I I went with uh, Megan and her family, and so anytime she knew something bad was about to happen, she wouldn't really tell me, but she'd just start squeezing my hand so I'd know. And you knew. (laughs) Yeah, and right before the drop happens, I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh god! And I fell down. (laughs) I was like, okay. And then Guess you peed your pants. Happening. No, dog. Like, a- after I ride that ride once, after I ride any ride once, any fear or anything goes away and I can just start having fun with it. Like, dude, I, lo- I love getting wet. Getting wet on Get rides. Get wet on rides. Get wet on rides. Like, uh, off topic, the Jurassic Park ride at Universal. Oh, I get soaked on that bit. I'll be like, excuse me, please put me in the front on the very left. That is the wettest part of this ride, and I, <laughs> I need this. I can't. I I have never been to Universal. I was trying to think of a water ride that I've been on, but I am coming up with a blank. Because I was supposed to go on Splash Mountain, but we got tickets to that rickety-ass wooden train thing. Instead. Don't you talk about train train ride extravaganza? Train ride's my favorite. Actually, not really. I don't like it that much. Well, we did end up riding it because I was like, no, we're going to die on it because yeah. Final Destination. But mm-hmm. um, Can I just say, though, the CG in this movie for being 2001 is fucking amazing. It really is. Like, 
it aged super well. Like at the end where they have those beams of moonlight shooting down into yes. the cave for, for literally no other reason than dramatic effect. Like I was like, oh, this this aged so well. Unlike the time I decided to try to watch Shrek on an airplane. Went, <laughs> wow, this is rough. What do you mean so it's yeah. rough? Well, we're not talking about Shrek. We'll save that. We'll, sh- we'll save that for the Shrek Shrek. Shrek extravaganza that we do dude that's not on the list is it we gotta add it <laughs> imagine <laughs> the, the, the shrek, shrek fanfic brenna i know of shrek fan fiction and it would be horrifying i can already tell you that right now um can we just talk about shithead will turner yes please because... or i want i want to like him i really do because he's got <sighs> really cool scenes in the movie like yeah that opening scene like the opening scene where him and jack have that sword fight and he's just like i train three hours a day so that when i find a pirate i can kill it and then uh and i'm like that's really dope and then that (laughs) end scene where then the end scene happens where he's just like i guess i'm a pirate now that means i need a fucking big ass musketeer hat and he just walks in like m'lady oh god that musketeer hat is like the fedora of the 70s oh my god it is (laughs) He just pimps in, just like, all right, I guess I'm a pirate now. Like, no, you're a shithead. That's it, all you are, my dude. You're just less a shithead than wig-wearing bitch. Mm-hmm. See, I'm I'm mad that I didn't see this in theaters because I was a coward, because this is definitely a theater movie, I think. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I was young when I, young-ish when I saw it, but I do remember yeah. it being spectacular a spectacle if you will because with me sitting there in a recliner just watching it with like light all around me and it not being that loud it does give you that this is a fucking long movie feeling yes like uh that like i got the this is a fucking long movie feeling um right before they got to the beach or uh, not the beach but the rum place <laughs> like that the rum uh, island that was about the place where i was just like damn this is a long movie oh never mind they're burning down the island and jack is yelling about rum now i'm back in yeah it. i think that's what jack sparrow was in it for was to keep you in it yeah, whenever you got like, bored it was like jack say something funny mm-hmm. jack please jack we'll, we'll give you the rest of the, this fucking series my dude <laughs> you're you're kind of like the Urkel of Pirates of the Caribbean. You were just supposed to be a side character, and then everyone loved you. And then Jack just pimps in like, did I do that? And everyone's like, yeah, Jack! Yeah, you did! Do it some more! Uh-huh. Oh, that, Brenna, you don't, you don't, you've never watched Family Matters, have you? So you No, I have. Well, then you, uh, you didn't get the, the I, reference. I did, but... Damn it! Damn it, Brenna! You're ruining the show! Anyways, <gasps> uh... <laughs> well you know what you can find yourself another co-host sir brenna you're absolutely the worst co-host i have ever heard of thank you thank you sir well damn it you didn't do it again you're supposed <laughs> to say that you have heard of me <laughs> well you can't expect me to go along with your jokes I have that's not it. what i'm here for mm-hmm Brenna, I, I I look at books a lot, and I have great expectations. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say, like, I, I think it's just because, like, the theater training that me and you both have kind of beat it into my skull of evaluating, like, why did they do this and what's it about and like what's the like? I realized very quickly that in this one, the whole plot is really about like pirates pirates are guilty by association but they're actually good people and the line uh you can either accept that your father was a pirate and a good man or you can't is like the penultimate like that's what this movie is about i think see i went like even simpler with it i was like Mm -hmm. disney's trying to teach us not to steal and don't lie because what gets you into trouble she took that piece of gold and then she said her last name was Turner and everything went to shit. Well, Brenna, I have a response to that. And that's if Jack Sparrow did not spill, steal that piece of gold, he'd be dead right now. 
the end of the film, which, by the way, that might be my favorite, like, shot in that whole movie is where Jack is rolling that gold co coin across his bone fingers. And then like, didn't yeah. the monkey stole one, too, in the end credit scene, didn't it? No, the monkey had already stolen one because oh, okay. the monkey was already, like, a fucked up monkey skeleton thing. Scary ass. I hate monkeys. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, like, that scene, the scene where they reveal, like, oh, yeah, we're all fucking skeletons. That's the dopest scene. That was the one it where is. I was like, oh, the CG is great. And my fa but my favorite part is right before that, where uh, Barbosa looks at Elizabeth and is just like, you don't have to be polite, dear. You can eat as much as you want. At which point she's like, fucking challenge accepted. And then just Guy Fieri's down on her plate of food, like, <laughs> obnoxiously and he's like would you like some wine Gah! and i was like this is my this is my woman this is my woman right here that's what ladies Just should do down turkey legs and chug wine like girl yes. yeah girl you get it you get it girl um Man, there's just so much parlay. Parlay is probably one of my favorite things. I want to start using parlay in like normal. Like if I'm ever in trouble at work and they're just like, all right, Scotty, you've missed five days because you went to WrestleMania. Uh, and I'll just be like, parlay. I'm sorry, parlay. I have to speak to the manager right oh now God. before you can do anything to me. It says it right here in the handbook. Then you have to get the can I speak to your manager haircut. Brenna, I'm getting close. My hair's growing out, <laughs> and I'm getting... I'm gonna get upset when it reaches that length. Um, also, parlay is, in fact, from the French, as Jack Sparrow says, because it means... Uh, parlay means uh, speak in French. And that's your Scotty Moore... That's your Scotty Moore French fun fact of the day. Uh, <laughs> is this a thing now? Has this been a thing? I don't know. If we ever do Beauty and the Beast, I'll go fucking ham on that. It'll be like, Belle means beauty in French, and so that's why they called her Belle. Wow, that's deep. Right? <laughs> oh, man, when I learn French, I'm just like, I'll see certain words and be like, oh, that's why that's called that. Okay, cool, awesome. But uh, back to back to the actual thing we're here for. Right. Can we just discuss how impotent the British Army look in this fucking film? I <laughs> I mean, aren't they though? Like it's so bad. Like it's on level of Hamilton with King George levels of making him look like a little bitch. Like it's real rough. Yeah, they do absolutely nothing but wear wigs. Well, not only that, my favorite is still the like that opening scene where she passes out and falls to the water and then everyone's just like, "Should you jump in?" Nah, dog. There's rocks down there. Right. Can you jump in? Can you jump in? I can't swim. You're a fucking sailor. You better learn how to swim pretty quickly, my dude. At which point, Jack's like, "Uh, yeah, guys, I'm the bad guy, kind of, and you're gonna let me do this. Jump in. It's anti-hero time. It's anti-hero time. Um, so I had another thing, and I think I lost it. Give me a minute. I think I'm gonna get it back think about it oh oh also this movie could have ended like two hours early yes because this this is one of those movies where the bad guys they ain't that bad like all they want is like the curse to be lifted and it wouldn't be that hard to do either yeah like the scene where uh they're just like oh, i just get a little bit of blood out of you dear and put this coin in and we'll be fine why didn't will just be like wait fuck that's all you need well, here you go. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's do this. You want to hang out after this? We go to Tartuga and get wasted, bro. He wanted some dramatics. He was just like, I have to. I don't like blood. <laughs> I get nervous <laughs> when I see it. Damn it, shithead Will. Shithead Will, calm down. That's a. I like that. That should be his pirate name. <laughs> there was Bootstrap Bill and Shithead Will. I like it. Mm-hmm. Man, uh, there's just so many. There's a. This is like the Dark Knight, in that it's a very long movie with a bunch of very good scenes with a bunch of shit connecting it that I don't remember at all. So if you're just like, give me a plot synopsis, I'm like, I can't, but I can tell you about that really dope scene where Elizabeth and Jack get drunk on the island and he flirts with her. Cause who wouldn't? Am I right? 
thank you for saying it. I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to be that dude. <laughs> but my girl, Akira, are looking good in this film. She is, she do. Although, to be fair, J Depp also looking greasy, nasty, good. And when he grows his mustache out, Will Turner don't look bad. I got to disagree with you on that one, but you have your own taste and it's fine. But I can't get behind that. (laughs) The opening of the film, I was like, oh, damn it. I thought he had like a beard and looked cool in this one. And then it just, he slowly magically grows a beard throughout the film. I'm like, okay, cool. Dope. Awesome. That'll work. You you can't hide that face. It it doesn't work for me. (laughs) See, that's the thing. A lot of people are like, beards make dudes look so much handsomer. I'm like, no, beards hide a lot of dude face. Dude. It hides... (laughs) It hides the ugly, and now just over that dude face is some luscious fur for you to pet at night. It's like makeup for men, but that grows out of your face. It's nice, soft makeup. And Brenna, you know what else is nice and soft? Tell me about it, Scotty. (laughs) Our shirt's over at merch.aloadofpurebs.com. That's right, guys. We got fun fiction merch, biatch. Whoop. I feel bad. I shouldn't have called you a biatch. You're our listener. We love you. But we did. We do have merch for you over at merch.aloadofpurebs.com. And we got merch for all the other shows over there. So make sure to go check it out. Pick you up some merch. It's at there like B. Huh? You own some BS merch. I do. I was just about to interject and say it is super soft. Like Right? Right, like, this is not even me trying to sell shit. This is me being, like, I am wearing a merch from a another uh, uh, something else like from a, a wrestler's merch and it's all right but our shit is the best dude it's so good and you can get it over at merch dot a load of pure bs dot com so now b it's time to bring up some some fan fandy fiction fandy fic and, and you are going first my girl get oh it. right well scotty today i have for you something that i did not know existed Apparently, there's a um, niche kind of group of uh, fanfic that is called song songfic, in I'm which, <laughs> in which um, some or all of the dialogue is from uh, songs. So I found one, um, Scotty. I don't know what your music taste was back when we were, you know, like fifteen or sixteen. But, oh no, I'm already scared because I know what your music taste I, was back then. I was really heavy into um, Secondhand Serenade. They were one of my favorite bands. And if you don't know who they are, you should look them up after we get done. But the song in this one is called Fall For You. And okay. The name. So wait, hold on. Uh, Let me yes. ask: Is this is it a parody of this song, or no. is this song like a, an addition to this? It's an it's an adi- an addition to it. Okay, so it's like Rock of Ages, except yeah. instead of telling the rock story, they're telling the story of Pirate Jack Sparrow. Yeah, <laughs> sort of. Oh no. <laughs> okay. So, um, the name of this lovely piece of work is called "Last Night on the Black Pearl." And it's by Unstable Universes. And I guess we should just get into it, because... Okay. Jack, are you in there? Simba called through the thin wooden door. Upon getting no response, he gently nosed open the door to the captain's chambers and peered in. The room was dark, except for a single candle lit on the desk. Captain Jack Sparrow stood over it, facing away from the young lion, appearing to be plotting the Black Pearl's course on a map. Jack, please just... Talk to me, Simba begged as he approached the man. He stretched out a paw to caress Jack's arm. Have you finished packing? Jack snapped back. Simba flinched and pulled his paw away, physically reacting to the spite in the man's world words. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I I was sending something to someone on Facebook and Simba? <laughs> yeah, you should be listening and not interacting I'm with so- your Facebook. I'm sorry. Do I need to start over? I'm gonna be a mighty king, so enemies beware. There was another fan fiction that had that in it that I almost chose, but I didn't. <laughs> so, um, yes, 
I'm ready to go in the morning. I just wanted one last night with you, Simba whispered. Jack finally turned to face Simba. His eyes were red and puffy. One hand reached up and rubbed an eye with the heel of his palm as he sniffled. Simba stood up on his hind legs, placing his front paws on Jack's shoulders. His rough tongue lapped away the last couple of tears that streamed from Jack's eyes. The best thing about That's tonight... The, that was the grossest <laughs> sentence. <laughs> the best thing about tonight's that we're not fighting. Could it be that we have been this way before? Simba cooed into Jack's ear. I know that... I know you don't think that I am trying. I know you're wearing thin down to the core. Jack smiled slightly and looked away from the lion. It was so rare that Simba recognized issues in their relationship. Usually whenever Jack would voice a problem, he would just akuna matata it away and ignore Jack's feelings. <laughs> I know you have to go, Simba. Pride Rock is yours by right, just like the Black Pearl is mine. I just wish we could lead together as one. Saying it out loud for the first time ever, Jack began to choke up. Another tear rolled down Jack's cheek, but Simba's tongue was quick to lick it away. This is <laughs> this is not what I intended, Jack regretted. I always swore to you I'd never fall apart. You always thought that I was stronger. I may have failed, but I have loved you from the start. Jack, ashamed at his lack of composure, buried his face in Simba's thick red mane. A sob racked his body and Simba pulled him in closer, offering reassuring chushes. Tonight will be the night that I will fall for you over again, Simba murmured to the teary-eyed man. Don't make me change my mind, or I'll never live to see another day. <laughs> really? Jack pulled his face out of Simba's mane to look him in the eye. I swear it's true. Simba removed his paws from Jack's shoulders and gently took Jack's hand into his mouth. He led the man away from the desk and out the door. The two headed to the bow of the ship. They gazed out over the open ocean. Stars shone brightly over the deep blue-purple sky. It reminded Simba of the night he talked to his father in the stars. So breathe in so deep. Breathe me in. I'm yours to keep, Simba, Simba whispered lovingly. No, Simba, your pride rocks to keep. I was just a fling to you, wasn't I? Jack couldn't hold back the tears any better than he could in his chambers. He cried, not caring that his crew could see. Hold on to your words, because talk is cheap, Simba reassured. He nuzzled up against Jack again, holding him as best as a lion can while, his <laughs> while the man sobbed. The serenity of the water calmed Jack slightly, no longer openly sobbing, just the occas occasional sniffle and silent tear. Will you remember all this? Jack asked. Remember us? A boy like you is impossible to find, Simba said simply, nestling a little closer against Jack's chest and following with a much quieter, you're impossible to find. The following morning, the two were awoken by a crewmate throating land ho from the crow's nest. They held their embrace for a moment longer, neither wanting to break away from the other, but it was inevitable that they would have to rise from the bed at some point or another. Jack dressed and they stepped out onto the deck. Looking ahead, Simba could see the coast of Africa slowly growing larger on the horizon. The Black Pearl laid anchor, and Simba said goodbye to his entire crew until finally he was back face-to-face -face with Captain Jack Sparrow. They shared another embrace, neither able to say another word for fear of breaking out in loud, uncontrollable tears. Their hug was long and tender, enjoying the very essence of the other, their feel, their smell. Finally, Jack pulled away and placed a light kiss on Simba's forehead. With a sad smile and a nod, Simba turned and leapt off the deck of the Black Pearl, landing on the beach below. He looked back once and made eye contact with Jack, who nodded again. Go, Simba! Be the Lion King! Jack called after his lion lover, tears once again streaming oh. down his face. So bad. It's the, the end. <laughs> it's the fucking worst! <laughs> Didn't oh. I tell you? Oh my god, Brenna! Are you crying over there? You loved it. Oh, no, no, I did. Oh, gee. because it took me a minute. I was just like, I wonder where, the, like, because for me, I was thinking of it like Rock of Ages to where, like, <laughs> they'll be talking, 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 and then they'll start singing. But oh. no, it just became dialogue at some point. Yes. It's just like Simba went to, Simba went to Jack Sparrow and uttered quietly. When I was a young boy, my father took me into the Pride to see a marching band. That's exactly what it is. It's so bad. Oh, my God. Okay. Now, mine... Brenna, we thought last week we went niche with Adventure Zone. We're going fucking niche this week because you're doing whatever that was. <laughs> and 
mine is ba- it, it it is a crossover between Pirates of the Caribbean and a uh it's a, it was a big sh- kind of a big show a, a big neat show and um it had a video that made it onto YouTube like a clip from it that became very viral and big I'm not going to spoil it but you may not have seen this so e- that's going to make this even better but I'm just going to read it <clears throat> Once again Our dear captain found himself without his precious pearl and resigned to sail ocean in a rather small and rather leaky dinghy. (laughs) Ah, well, at least this time he found the dinghy. (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) He had enough rum to keep him going a few more weeks and a stash of coconuts, so he reasoned he'd be able to catch up with his ship soon enough, as he would not have have to make port for supplies anytime soon. Funnily enough, living most his life at sea, Jack had never actually tried fishing himself, but he was Captain Jack Sparrow. How hard could it be? He reached into the bait box and brought out a fat maggot. He looked at it curiously before tossing the wriggling grub into his mouth. Chewing and nodding his head from side to side, he thought, Well, at least I can survive all these for a bit if I don't catch a fishy. (laughs) He hooked another to the end of the fishing line and expertly cast it over the boat. Feeling very smug, he looked around, grinning. His smile dropped when he realized he was on his own and no one witnessed his moment of brilliance. Jack soon, soon discovered that fishing was incredibly boring. People do this for funsies, he thought. And they say I'm balmy. The sun had disappeared by now, and full moon was high in the sky. Jack had started to doze off, having feasted on more maggots and drowning the taste with rum. Suddenly, he felt a shudder and saw the line go taut. Excitedly, he grabbed the rod and began reeling in the line. He felt the line tug. He pulled it back, tugged harder, and he pulled it back again. Then the line tugged back with such force it almost pulled Jack overboard. All right, fishy, he said. You don't know who you're dealing with. He pulled himself up, righted his hat, and tugged with all his might while reeling in the line, but it wouldn't budge. But it didn't tug back either. Instead, the line went loose. Ah, bugger, Jack thought. There goes Dindins. Guess it's just you and me, lads, he said, looking down at the wriggling box of maggots. He grimaced at the thought of living off grubs for the foreseeable future. Suddenly, the line went taunt again, and Jack only managed to regain his grip on the rod before it was pulled from his grasp. Ah-ha! Gotcha, fishy! <laughs> Captain's don't let you get in the way this time, he expl- exclaimed. Thought you could trick old Jack, did you? This will be an almighty fish, he thought happily. Looks like some of you might not make it through this, he said to the box of maggots. Suddenly, an almighty force pulled on the line, but Jack determined that he would not let it go. It pulled again with such force that Jack lost his footing, and before he knew it, he was pulled into the water. All right, fishy, now you're into it. He seethed, pulling out his dagger, the other hand still holding the rod. He dove under the water and searched for the monster fish still tucked to the end of his line. Through the dark water lit by the moon, he could make out a form ahead of him, but it didn't look like a fish. To his horror, it turned to him and lifted up its... tutu? Jack yelled, swallowing a lungful of water as the light emitting from that... whatever it was, blinding him, and then it all went black. Strange, dreamlike, horrible images flashed through Jack's mind. He was being pulled down and something was pressing its mouth against his, filling his lungs with air. He finally emerged from the water, sputtering, and felt himself being dragged along the ground. He tried to move but found himself unable to. It was as if that strange light had paralyzed him. It took all his efforts to rind his memory of what he had seen. When he finally managed to his... What? I'm sorry, this is also written very poorly. When he finally managed to, his mind went blank again. Oh, uh, when he finally managed to, his mind went blank again. After After time, Jack regained consciousness. He opened his eyes and, blinking, found he was in a cave, filled with some most peculiar things. It was then that his memory came rushing back. Closing his eyes, he quickly thought, Well, whatever was on the end of my line was definitely no fishy. Mermaid, perhaps. No, that thing, that that horrible... He shuddered. Whatever it was, it brought him to this place. He tried to move, but found his arms tied behind his head. He realized he was lying on a bed. He looked down the bed and gasped. At the end of the bed was... What was it? A man? A fish? Definitely wasn't a mermaid. His eyes were fixed on Jack, smiling serenely at him. He had a man's face with scaly and green, with big red lips. What looked like seaweed hang around his face like hair. Did you have good dreams? He asked in an odd... (laughs) 
Did you just realize what this is? I did. He asked in an odd, croaky voice, grinning. Um, what? Where am I? Greg's place. Jack digested this. <laughs> so you're Greg, he asked. Yes, sir, I'm old Greg. Oh, I'm my Gregory, God. Sir. <laughs> old Gregory, sir, this is my home. Do you like it? Jack looked around, taking in his strange surroundings. It was damp and dark and reeked of rotten fish. Nets hung from the walls of the cave, filled with all manner of things. Was that a human skeleton he saw in one? Ship parts and junk items were strewn about the place. It's a, it's charming, Jack replied. Thank you, sir. That's good, sir. Glad you <laughs> like it. You'll be very comfortable here. I got all things that are good. I, I got this, he said, pulling up a bit of rope with a bucket tied to the end. Great, said Jack, <laughs> trying to be complimentary. You can have it, he said, <laughs> laying it across Jack's legs. Um, cheers, said Jack, so bewildered by this creature's strangeness, he didn't know what else to say or do. What he did know is he had to get out of here and fast. Before he could say anything, Greg spoke again. I'm gonna hurt you. Uh, <laughs> what was that? Replied Jack, unsure of what he had just heard. I like you. What do you think of me? <laughs> huh. Jack replied, snapping out of his thoughts. W well, we've we've only just met, Greg. He smiled nervously, then thought. But you seem like a very fine chap. Perhaps you'd be good enough to untie me arms? That's starting to hurt at that. So you like me? Greg replied, <laughs> ignoring Jack's request. <laughs> yes. Yes, I like you, Greg. Jack replied earnestly as he could, <laughs> as he was unsure of where this was going. Do you love me? Oh my god. I'll pretend I didn't hear that, shall I, Greg? Do you love me? Uh, now, Greg, as I said, we've only just met. Jack chuckled nervously. But do you think you can love me? Well, Greg, I'm, I'm afraid my only love is the sea. I'm a scaly man fish. I'm part of the sea. You will love me just as I love you. I'm all Greg! Well, Greg, I'm flattered, but as I said, we've only just met, so I don't really know you. He was getting panicky now. This thing, whatever it was, was clearly insane. He started suddenly trying to free his hands from their bindings. But you do know me. What about the boat times when we played catchy pulley? That was our first date. You tried to pull me into your boat with your strong arms. You wanted old Greg. Unless you were doing something else with that fishing line. Jack thought carefully. Oh my god. Clearly, clearly this thing was part fish and wouldn't take kindly to the idea of someone catching fish to eat for their supper. Quite right, he said meekly. That was a fun game, Greg laughed. And then you seen my downstairs mix-up, so you do know me. <laughs> oh, that, said Jack, grimacing. That was old Greg's mangina. Oh my That's god. Right. That's why we're perfect for each other. I got a mix-up. You got a mix-up. My mix-up? Said Jack, confused. You're a lady, man. I'm not. Jack yelled back, anger now starting to show. But you got the long hair, the pretty jewels, the makeup. And you're mighty pretty. Greg smiled. <laughs> I'm, a I'm a bloody pirate. Jack yelled. Hush now, you fuzzy little man, Peach. Soothed oh. Greg. Maybe I should check you downstairs to make sure. He leaned over Jack and reached out for his belt. Quick as a flash, Jack swung off the bed, so he's kneeling beside it, hands still tied to the bed toast. <laughs> the <Literally>. bed toast! <laughs> I'm sorry, not bed toast. bed toast! I love bed toast! It's so good, but the crumbs good, get all no, in No, and it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no need for that, Jack said alarmed. One thing was for sure, he wasn't going to let this crazy thing any anywhere near his family jewels. <laughs> No need to be shy, smiled Greg. I'll get you a drink. Do you like Baileys? Don't suppose you have any rum, said Jack, hopefully having no idea. Said Jack, hopefully having no idea what a Baileys was. That's the devil's drink. Greg doesn't, <laughs> Greg doesn't keep that wee-wee liquid here. I'll get, you a I'll get you a Baileys. Jack was liking this creature less and less, but if Greg was going, to, going off to get a drink, it would give him a chance to redouble his escape efforts. Fine, he huffed. I'll be right back, said Greg, turning away. <laughs> oh, and no need for you to keep trying to get loose. Greg tied those knots real tight. I was in Boy Scouts. I got the Home Safety Activity Badge. I'm old Greg! 
He pointed proudly to a patch sewn onto his jacket. Besides, you need to save your energy for later. Ugh. He added the last bit with a chuckle, looking bashful. Jack felt like he just had ice water thrown over him. <laughs> Greg made his way over to a makeshift bar and brought out a bottle and a glass. He poured the drink. Well, now, J Greg, I can't very well drink with my arms all tied up like this, can I? Jack said as nicely as he could. Greg stared silently at him for a few seconds, the effect being quite terrifying. He reached out a scaly webbed hand and stroked the side of Jack's face. No worries. Oh, Greg will feel you, free your hands, fancy man, so you can drink your Baileys. <laughs> he reached down and put his hand up under his tutu. Jack's face turned to a mixture of confusion and disgust as he withdrew a knife from God knows where. But uh, if you try any funny business with old, Gre with old Greg, he's going to have to make you bleed. He said, subtly threatening, his eyes boring into Jack's. You understand? I'm old Greg! <laughs> now, once his hands were free, Jack was planning on using them to overpower his captor and make a speedy exit. But at Greg's words and piercing glare, he thought better of it. Greg was thus far an unknown foe, and he could only guess at what strength and powers he possessed. And after all, he had shown great force with the fishing line. Of course. He smiles weakly. And quick, quick as a flash, Greg moved beside Jack's tied arms and loosened them. Jack had little chance to rub his sore wrist before having the glass thrust into his hands. You gonna drink your Bayless? <laughs> it's, cr it's, it's creamy. Greg smiled eagerly. Yeah. Jack downed the brown liquid. It was far too sweet for his taste. Lovely. He lied. I'll get you another. L look, there's really no need. But another glass was thrust into his hand. Jack took a sip. Look, this has been lovely, and I'm most grateful for your hospitality and all, but I really must be getting going, so... He said, standing up and putting down the glass. Is this the way out? He said, pointing to an opening in the cave wall. Where are you going? You didn't finish your second bailings. As I said, Greg, I'm a pirate and a captain of a ship, and I, uh, I really must be getting back to us, so if you'd kindly... Oh, a captain... Greg never met a captain before. Exciting. Can I be Can I be your first mate? I'll come with you. Thanks for the offer, but I actually already have a first mate. You're lying. You was up in that ship all on your lonesome before we started playing catch you, Polly. Greg <laughs> said, suddenly angry. That wasn't me ship, said Jack, suddenly forgetting his current situation, outraged at the idea that dinghy could be considered his ship. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow of the Black Pearl. He said proudly, now growing more confident with his hands freed. He was tired of this creature's games now. Surely he could pose no real threat. Now show me the way out of here before I... He reached for his pistol, then moved to his sword, realizing that his effects were missing. <sighs> Where, where's me effects? He growled. I hid your stabby stick. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a good line. I hid your stabby stick and shooty wand when you were sleeping. <laughs> Greg grinned menacingly. Very dangerous. You could hurt someone with those. He <laughs> chuckled. That's the general idea. Jack muttered, panicked at now finding himself completely defenseless. They stared at each other in silence as the seconds ticked past. Greg grinning maddeningly as Jack seethed. And that's not the end. But this is a fucking long fan fiction, but I refused to not read it. You're going to have to send it's... the rest of it to me because I'm in love with it. I'm going to put links. I'm going to put a link in the uh, in the description. So if you guys want to read the rest of Old Greg and the Pirate by Proud Heart Cat, you guys can. It's so fucking like I think he starts he like proposes to Jack at one point. Oh, and uh looks like he feeds Jack rat piss. So that's a real it, wee wee liquid. That's that's a real wee wee liquid. It's so good. I'm all Greg. Um, so, yeah, I'm so, I'm violently happy that you knew what old Greg was, because otherwise that was going to no, get real confused. But I think I would have liked it anyway, just for the fact of you talking to yourself in different voices. It was quite I'm old Greg. <laughs> pleasing to my ear holes. Uh-huh. Uh, so, yeah. Also, if you guys haven't seen old Greg out there, fucking go watch old Greg. It's so good. Um, but you know what else is good, Brenna? What's good, Scotty? I don't know. What's good with you? Oh, you know nothing. It was good, it was good with all our Patreons over at patreon.com slash a load of BS. That's right, guys. 
If you want to support Fun Fiction, and if you want to support the entire BS network, you can over at patreon.com slash a load of BS. And we got perks over there for you. We've got an official Discord that you can join and hang and chat with us, which I actually need to get Brenna on. <laughs> and you get, uh, yep, and that that way if you join us over there you can help us figure out episodes you can help us figure out stuff like that and then of course you would get shouted out every single week on a load of bs but that's only available to you if you go over to patreon.com slash a load of bs now b i think i've been on a string of like emotional like real intense stories oh you mean killing people and taking things stories yeah exactly um so i wanted to change that up and i wanted to go just normal this i this might be the closest thing i've ever written to something i think i could actually find on fanfiction.net okay hit me with it 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 may not be good this is what i'm saying um and that's also because i had to rush to write this after i got done watching pirates so uh all right here we go Captain Jack Sparrow awakens in a stupor, as he often does, but before him is a mystical desert land, people staring at him bizarrely as he makes his way to his feet. He sees retailers dispensing out different exotic clothing, and people walk by him munching on massive amounts of food. The chaos reminds him of Tortuga, but this seems different from the place Jack had visited so many times before. He slowly approaches a bar. Greetings, stranger! And welcome to Agrabah! Oh my god. The young, girl ex- the young girl excitedly shouts towards the man. Her smile puts him off slightly as he stares at her. I'm sorry, Agra what? He replies as she continues to stare at him, smiling like a maniac. Agrabah! It's a mystical land of fortune and excitement! She replies as he looks around confused. His ears perk up at the mention of fortune, however. So what can I get for you today, sir? I... I just have some rum. Oh, I'm sorry, we don't have any rum here. What did you just say to me? We don't have any rum. Why is there no rum? (laughs) What good is a bar with no rum? He responds as she giggles quietly, then gives him a knowing smirk. She disappears and returns with a small cup filled with a strange yellowish-orange concoction. What is this? Well, I'll tell you now, it's a lot better than rum. She responds with a smile as he takes the cup and tastes of the concoction. This amazing taste of pineapple washes over his tongue as the cold mixture alleviates some of the sun's rays beating down on him. He quickly munches it down in front of her, then looks up, mustache covered in that strange brew. That... that is very good, but you said something about fortune. Where exactly is this fortune and excitement? I, uh... I think that man over there can help you. She responds with a smile as Jack turns around to see a tall man waving at him and and smiling. Ah, you want excitement, my friend, he says with a raised eyebrow. Jack responds with a confused look and then a quick nod of the head. Moments later, Jack finds himself strapped atop a large carpet, buckled in. He struggles against these restraints as suddenly a small child is placed next to him. Um, hello. (laughs) Jack comments to the child who looks up at him with a giggle. Having a good day? Um, have some of that yellow stuff? Before Jack can continue and before that child can answer, he feels himself lifted into the air atop this carpet, the ground disappearing. He now panics against his restraints as the carpet suddenly begins to move forward, spinning Jack in a fast circle. He sees others around him on these same carpets, laughing and enjoying themselves. Jack thinks they have to be some sort of sick masochists or something to enjoy this. This horrifying ride continues for moments, and then slowly lowers to the ground. Okay, what... what was that? He asks to the man who had him strapped into his carpet. The man merely laughs at this as Jack stumbles over to a nearby trash can and dispenses that frozen pineapple concoction into it via his mouth. He wipes away his beard and then stands in a panic. I've got to get out of here. Jack runs and runs and then suddenly finds himself in what appears to be a sophisticated colonial city. His eyebrows raised as he sees people willingly climbing into the stocks, a place that Jack had been in many times before but never willingly. 
suddenly massive bears come running out of nowhere but once again there was no panic from the people around him only laughter as these bears run rabid throughout the streets jack immediately panics and runs into a nearby building taking refuge in a seat suddenly the lights dim and Jack sits up straight as some sort of mystical moving image is displayed before him, showing images of horrifying war and then a country coming together in rebirth. The mystical image continues to display these different stories as Jack nearly nods to sleep, the novelty of this mystic picture quickly fading away. Suddenly the curtains part as several men appear to be on the stage, each moving robotically. Oh, this is my favorite part! The man next to Jack excitedly says, rubbing his hands together. I'm, I'm sorry, who exactly are these people? Jack asks with a raised eyebrow as the voice overhead booms. William Howard Taft. As a, rot as, a, as a rotund figure moves robotically back and forth, a spotlight trained on him. Oh, these are our presidents, our, our leaders. He responds with a smile as Jack watches this horrific show. And it said you... You elect these people? You choose them? Oh yeah, we all get a say. Even that orange one with the cat on its head? Oh my god. Well, well, I didn't vote for him. Moments later, Jack and the man slowly exit the building, the hot sun beaming down on Captain Sparrow's forehead. So, you all get together a lot to watch these dead people move around? Well, not really, it's kind of expensive we paid nearly two thousand dollars on this you paid two thousand dollars for that well that and other stuff uh, hey if you want to see some really cool get dead guys go check that place out suddenly the man's finger shoots forward to show jack a horrifying mansion on a hill dilapidated gates decorate the entrance as jack slowly enters tombstones surrounding him Moments later, he finds himself trapped in a room with numerous people all surrounding him. All right, everyone, please step into the dead center of the room. <laughs> the woman slowly utters as Jack suddenly feels himself crushed by numerous people all coming towards him at once. You know, this doesn't exactly seem like the most inviting mansion. Jack comments quietly as the walls around him suddenly begin to stretch higher and higher. Jack's eyes widen. What did that woman put in that drink? Suddenly, a loud scream and darkness. Jack immediately pulls out his saber in response, but the lights slowly rise once again and a door opens, sending the numerous people inwards. Moments later, Jack finds himself once again strapped into a chair next to a massive gentleman who squishes Jack's body against the side of the cart. He is then led through a series of images that would be horrifying to a normal man, but Jack was experienced with death. Ghosts j dance around Jack as he smiles for the first time today, leaning over to the man. Yeah, just so you know, death, nothing like this. <laughs> it's a lot more screaming, really. This causes the man to awkwardly shift in his seat as a loud song begins booming overhead, Jack clapping along with the music. Afterwards, Jack rushes off of the cart. This place is amazing. There's dead people and pineapple hallucinogens. I love it. With that, he rushes off into the rest of this amazing place, meeting different princesses from numerous kingdoms and eating these exotic foods, such as this delicious selection of meats that the uh, baker had rammed into a small tube and then placed in a roll of bread with various sauces and cheese decorating the top. That was a hot dog <laughs> for those of you who aren't following along at home. Uh, Jack smiles as he finishes his food when he notices a nearby river with the sun setting behind it. He knew this would take him to the ocean and his home. Moments later, Jack finds himself at the beginning of that river, a young man piloting a small vessel, which seems small, but enough for Jack to fit inside. All right, ladies and gentlemen, get away, get away. You see my name? My name is Captain Jack Sparrow, and I'm commandeering this vessel for the evening. Look, I'm, I'm sure you won't have to wait long for another. There appears to be more coming through. Jack smiles as he sits at the head of the boat, but he finds no steering wheel. But luckily, it begins moving forward. As he exits the area, he smiles and screams. And just remember, this is the day you almost caught Captain Jack Sparrow. Suddenly, Jack is flung into a strange world of rabbits and foxes. 
His eyebrows raise as he learns of the fox's evil plan to destroy the rabbit. Jack pulls out his saber to slice the fox's throat and save that rabbit from his evil. He sees the, vox, the fox staring at him with malicious intent and leans out to stab at the creature when suddenly he begins to fall. <gasps> Jack shoots down nearly four stories as water splashes up around him, his sword falling out of his hand behind him. A man quickly rushes him out of his boat as he makes his way into a small shop soaked in water. Another gentleman walk walks up to him with a smile and shows him a photo of himself falling down that drop, his face frozen in a grim mask of death. He groans and shoves the man away, then makes his way back out into the world that he had just that had just treated him so well, but it now seemed to betray him. He passes by a world that seems strangely futuristic. Massive towering pyramids and space adventurers surround him as he groans and continues to walk when he sees a massive castle before him. Numerous people surround the castle, all taking photos, and Jack knew that whoever owned this place had to be in that castle. The sky is dark and he rushes forward, but... He finds only a pathway through the castle, no entrances to be found. So he knew what he had to do. Jack began to climb. He began to climb that castle higher and higher, attempting to find some way to enter. He notices a young girl in a bright green dress on top of one of the pillars. And Jack smiles as he knew she had to know a way in. He continues to climb higher and higher when suddenly music begins to boom overhead. But this bizarre place had already done enough today. That music wasn't going to distract Captain Jack Sparrow. He climbed higher and higher when suddenly that green lady jumped and began to fly. Jack stares in disbelief and sorrow as she flies away, disappearing into the night. Suddenly explosions begin to sound behind him as numerous cannons shoot into the air all around Jack. He struggles to keep his footing when suddenly one of those red cannon blasts shoots straight for Jack, striking his foot and causing him to fall, crashing against the side of the castle and nearly falling straight to the ground. Jack's head cracks against the roofing, causing him to black out. Moments later, Jack awakens in a small white room with numerous people surrounding him. He groans, he groans as he slowly makes his way into a sitting position. He reaches to the back of his head and feels a large bandage covering his skull. Johnny? He's awake! He's awake! One of the individuals calls as she runs out of the room and down a corridor. Johnny? Who is Johnny? <laughs> Jack, th Jack thinks. Do you remember anything? I mean, that was a very nasty fall you took, Mr. Depp. Another man slowly approaches Johnny. I, I mean, Jack. At least I... He thinks he's Jack. Jack fades in and out of consciousness as suddenly numerous people fill into the room, each repeating that name, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. And then he slowly realizes that he's not Captain Jack Sparrow. He's Johnny Depp. And earlier in that day, he had come to the parks to promote Pirates of the Caribbean 8, Pirates in Space. Oh my god. And while surprising guests on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, he took a stumble forward, landing in the boat and knocking himself unconscious. He awoke in the disembarking area of Pirates of the Caribbean, where numerous medical staff are awaiting him, but Johnny, aka Jack, would have nothing of it, pushing past them and fighting away anyone who tried to stop him. The medical team tried to track him down, but by the time they made it out of the building, he had disappeared into that massive crowd of people and into Agrabah. Are you all right, Johnny? The doctor once again asks as Johnny smirks and slowly stands, walking over to a table which contained his effects and places his tricorn hat on his head. What are you doing? Well, you did a very good job today. Jack responds with a smile as he grabs his saber and rushes towards the door. But you will always rue this day as the day you almost caught. Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> the end. <laughs> I liked it. I I know. I I'm really harsh on myself. I'm sorry. I know. I need to just like, stop no, that. It's not worth it. I feel like it's a little bit autobiographical. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I, 
know, we all know that that time I cracked my head on the side of Pirates of the Caribbean and then climbed up the magic up Cinderella Tower. Yeah, I saw a video of it. What are you talking about? Yeah, bro, that was real. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the things that I was like, I'm hoping this M. Night Shyamalan twist at the end will be enough to push me through. Yeah, you know, it. Uh, that sort of thing is hit or miss, but you hit it. Thank you. I, I was hoping I hit it. Because, well, my original intention for it was going to be, uh, like, not having it be a twist and just having the beginning be Johnny cracks his head and then he's going on a search, this massive search for treasure, which led to finding a frozen Walt Disney and taking <gasps> all of his money. But then I was like, oh, man, I don't have enough time to flesh all that out. Let's just have him have an adventure around Disney World. It's good. And it's good. It's good. Mm -hmm. So, Miss Miss B, Miss Brina, it's been an episode. Where can they find you on the internet? Look me up on Twitter or Instagram or whatever else at Brennasaur, B-R-E-N-N-A-S-A-U-R. And you can find me on the Twitter machine at S-C-O-T-T-Y-E-M-O. That's Scott Emo. Oh, uh, yeah. You can also find me on oh yeah yeah <laughs> and you can also you can find me on Instagram under the same name and then you can find me on Amazon Kindle in the Kindle store you can buy my Quizzle Court books the BS versus the Gods books and then of course you can go to Audible and get the audio books for the first two Quizzle Court books and I'm actually producing the BS versus the Gods ones right now and that one should be out in July hopefully so yeah make sure to check out Audible we need to get that Audible sponsor yeah. And yes, we need an audible sponsor. That's what we need, guys. And uh, yeah, all, of course, also make sure to go to a load of pure BS dot com and check out all the other BS network programs like Fight Boys, like Opposite Attractions. And of course, like a load of BS, the show that I'm actually about to record as soon as me and B are done recording this show. Ooh, ooh. So, yeah, make sure. Ooh, ooh. So check that out, out all over at alotapurebs.com. Pick up your merch at merch.alotapurebs.com and donate to our Patreon, as always, ladies and gentlemen. But until next time, Brenna, I've been Scotty Moore. And I've been Brenna Clark. And you should always stay away from baby Hitler. Yeah! Nailed it! <laughs>